Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. In the modern world of the Holocene, birds are among the most successful of all vertebrate lineages, with over 11,000 species dwelling on every continent, including Antarctica. With their endothermic metabolisms, beaks and feathery coats, birds seem strikingly different from any other modern animal group, and as such were once placed in their own unique separate class of aves. The first member of this class was thought to have been the genus Archaeopteryx, from the late Jurassic of Bavaria, a raven-sized animal that was the first Mesozoic species with evidence of feathers to be officially described by paleontologists during the second half of the 19th century. With a mixture of seemingly avian and reptilian traits, including pinacious feathers, toothy jaws and a long tail, Archaeopteryx seemed like a perfect transitional form and was hailed as the first bird bolstering the then recent theory of evolution by natural selection, as proposed by Charles Darwin. Although some early studies proposed a close relationship between Archaeopteryx and theropod dinosaurs, with Thomas Henry Huxley noting similarities with the small Salurosaur Compsonathus, the publication of Gerhard Heilmann's very systematic book The Origin of Birds in 1926 argued that these similarities were simply convergent. Heilmann argued that, as no wishbones were known from theropod dinosaurs at the time, the origin of birds could not have been from these animals, instead suggesting that the class Aves evolved from among the so-called Thecodont archosaurs during the Triassic. This view was so influential over the next few decades, that when a wishbone was found in association with the Coelophysid Segisaurus in 1936, this fact was simply ignored by most paleontologists. It would not be until the 1960s that the bird theropod connection would be seriously considered again, with the work of John Ostrom and his student Robert Bakker changing the paradigm to show the fundamental similarities between birds and dinosaurs. Modern phylogenetic studies, alongside the discovery of numerous feathered dinosaur fossils from China and elsewhere, have proven Huxley, Ostrom and Bakker to be correct, with birds now being considered a very specialised group of living dinosaurs. However, the terminology regarding which animals are considered to be true birds has changed as more recent discoveries has come to light. Archaeopteryx is no longer considered to be a bird at all, but simply an early member of the lineage AVLA, which is defined as the group containing all theropod dinosaurs more closely related to birds than to dromaeosaurs or troodontids. Modern type birds, which today range from hummingbirds to ostriches, and are formerly known as aves or neonathes, are much more derived members of AVLA, and first appear during the late Cretaceous. These are the so-called true birds, with the staggering diversity of modern forms being a result of the KT extinction event that occurred 66 million years ago, which wiped out all other members of AVLA. During the Cretaceous, there were two major lineages within AVLA which were widespread and successful. These were the Anantionothenes, the so-called opposite birds, and the Euornithes, which included modern birds and their ancestors. Both lineages shared some similarities, including the presence of fused stumpy tail bones known as a piger style, a large keeled breastbone to support large muscles needed for flight, a modified glenoid in the shoulder, and a semi-rigid ribcage. However, an Antionothean tended to retain toothy snouts that lacked a beak, kept clawed digits on the wings, and had an arrangement of the shoulder bones that was very different from modern birds. These inhabited a wide range of ecological niches, but tended to be relatively arboreal, while the Euornithes lent more towards terrestrial and aquatic niches. Although, of course, there were exceptions, this kind of partitioning lasted until the end of the Cretaceous period, when the Anantionotheans died out, probably as a result of the destruction of their preferred forested habitats due to the effects of the Chicxulub impact. This suggests that all modern birds evolved from semi-aquatic shorebird or fowl-like ancestors that were unspecialised enough to survive a global cataclysm, going on to radiate wildly into all sorts of niches. However, the first basal relatives of living birds emerged during the early Cretaceous about 130 million years ago. The majority of these were members of the Jehol biota of Liaoning province, northeastern China and dwelt in relatively cool forested environments, consisting of conifers, cycads, ginkgos, and early flowering plants. The climate of this region during the early Cretaceous would have been somewhat similar to the Pacific Northwest of the United States and Canada today, 
being cool, temperate, and fairly humid, freshwater lakes were plentiful and helped to preserve the remains of animals in incredible detail thanks to the Lagerstata effect. One of the oldest and most basal members of the clade Euornithes was the genus Archaeorhynchus, from the Yixian formation of Liaoning, China. Known from very well-preserved specimens, this roughly pigeon-sized animal had a wingspan of about 40 centimeters, with a short tail and long rounded wings. Unlike most Enantiornotheans, the genus possessed a toothless beak, but its structure suggests that this feature evolved independently from those of modern birds. The wings and chest indicate that the genus was a powerful flyer, and would have taken off from the ground in order to escape from predators. It was probably a terrestrial animal, with the presence of gastroliths in association with known specimens, strongly suggesting that Archaeorhynchus was a herbivore. Juvenile individuals have also been found, with these showing signs of being strongly precocial, similar to young Enantionotheans and modern megapodes, indicating that this reproductive strategy was ancestral to Euornithes. Another basal form, Jangchanornis, was also present at Liaoning at roughly the same time, only with its remains stemming from the Jiofutang formation. It was a large Euornithene, with a wingspan of about 60 centimeters and a body length of 34 centimeters without the tail feathers. The skull was triangular in shape, complete with a pointed beak and small conical teeth, indicating that it ate fish and foraged for food in a lakeside environment. A more specialized family of early Euornithes were the Hongshan Ornithids, which were small terrestrial animals with relatively long legs. Hongshan Ornis itself was similar in size to a modern thrush, and possessed a small rounded skull, although it is not certain whether this genus had a beak. It did certainly have teeth, however, which were small and needle-like, being well adapted for grabbing insects and other small animals living near water. It may also have eaten seeds as well, given that some specimens have been found with gastroliths in the stomach cavity. As a whole, Hongshan ornithids would have been ecologically similar to modern plovers. Although most basal euornithes are known from the early Cretaceous of China, and seem to have been shorebird-like. Other forms are known from substantially later in the Cretaceous. The genus Patagopteryx was native to the late Cretaceous of Patagonia roughly 80 million years ago. About the size of a chicken, along with the semi-aquatic Hesperornithes, was one of the first members of Euornithes to become secondarily flightless. It was probably a generalist omnivore, feeding on seeds, insects, and other invertebrates, living like a flightless version of modern tinamous that inhabit South America today. Another later surviving form, Apsaravis, is known from the late Cretaceous of Mongolia and lived in the Jatochka Formation about 75 million years ago. A small animal with a wingspan of roughly 30 centimeters, Apsaravis inhabited a very dry, hot environment alongside a variety of other Maniraptor and theropods, including Velociraptor, the Oviraptorid Sitipati, and the duck-like Dromaeosaur Halskaraptor. Like many basal Euornithes, it was probably terrestrial, although due to the type specimen lacking a skull, it's difficult to say what its diet may have been. Whatever it ate, Apsar Ravis would have searched for food on the ground, with its long legs and stout toes helping it to walk and run on hot sand. It was a strong flyer, much like many modern birds, and may have been somewhat similar to the living sand grouse in terms of lifestyle. It is not certain where Apsar Ravis fits on the Euornithene family tree, but it was one of the youngest basal Euornithenes, living only 10 million years before the end of the Cretaceous. Better known forms include the early Cretaceous Yanornis, once again known from the early Cretaceous rocks of Liaoning. This chicken-sized animal is probably best known for being involved in the infamous Archaeoraptor hoax where its head, wings, and torso were artificially fused with the hindquarters and tail of Microraptor in order to create a fake chimera. In reality, Yanornis was a piscivorous genus with a skull equipped with small, sharp teeth. Its legs were quite short, indicating that it caught prey from the surface of the water or on the wing. It may have looked somewhat like a small cormorant or shag, only dwelling in freshwater inland environments. Living in the same region was the contemporary Gansus, which seems to have been closely related to the derived clade Ornithure. This contains all modern birds, as well as their close relatives, the Hesperornithines and the Ichthyornithines, meaning that Gansus may be similar to the common ancestor of all of these groups. In life, Gansus was a pigeon-sized animal and was similar to loons or diving ducks in appearance, 
being a semi-aquatic piscivore that lived in freshwater rivers and lakes. It had a wingspan of 40 centimeters and a body length of about 24 centimeters without the tail. It had large and powerful broad wings, as well as a very strongly keeled breastbone, giving it the powerful flight abilities seen in modern birds. The feet were webbed, while the long legs were strongly muscled, meaning that it was probably a foot-propelled swimming bird like modern greaves, though it also had excellent flight ability, and probably able to dive somewhat using both its feet and its wings. This is interesting, as most of the more derived ornithurines are also semi-aquatic and or shorebirds, indicating that all modern birds evolved from similar ancestors. In fact, being small, terrestrial, and able to access freshwater prey may have helped modern birds survive the KT extinction event when so many other members of Aviolae became extinct. If not for this mass extinction, the tremendous diversity within Aves may have never developed at all. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next episode will be covering the greatest ape of them all, Gigantopithecus, thanks to an interesting new study published about this fascinating and mysterious animal. See you again soon. Cheerio.